I'm Matt Smith right now on Upfront. Devastation in Florida, historic damage. Now a Wisconsin company on the ground. Generac CEO is here. Their hurricane efforts underway at this hour and the company's overall expansion in Wisconsin. Then six weeks to go, the NBA looking to election day. The new unprecedented moves by the league and the Milwaukee Bucks ahead of the midterms. Bucks President Peter Fagan and the NBA's head of its social justice coalition both standing by. And just hours away, the Daryl Brooks trial set to begin tomorrow. The man charged in the Waukesha Christmas parade attack representing himself. The legal and political fallout right now. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Smith. Widespread devastation still being assessed this weekend after Hurricane Ian ripped through parts of Florida. Governor Ron DeSantis calling the damage historic. Millions left without power. And even before the storms made landfall, crews from Waukesha-based Generac were en route. The company's hurricane response team this weekend working to maintain and fix backup generators in some of the hardest hit areas from homes to businesses. The company itself is in the midst of a major expansion. Aaron Yagfeld is the company CEO. He joins us now. Really good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Matt. First and foremost, what are hurricane efforts looking like as we sit here? Yeah, so we've gone into what we call our storm mode. So it's 24 seven, all of our call centers here in Wisconsin. Uh, we've got teams that have been deployed directly to the areas that have been impacted first in Florida. And now obviously with a second landfall uh, sometime today here in the Carolinas, uh, we'll see uh, our teams probably reposition towards that part of the, uh, the country. But they go into the, those markets and they work on products that, you know, for whatever reason, are not operating as they should. They don't even have to have a Generac brand on them. We're there to help, and that's what we send these folks down there to do. And this isn't, this isn't just home generators. We're talking business hospitals. Absolutely. So it can be everything that, uh, from a data center to a hospital to a wastewater treatment plant, our teams are down there on the ground really helping our distribution affect those kinds of repairs and get those machines back up and running. Generac has done this since Katrina, since since 2005. I saw a headline in Barron's last week that said, more power outages make storm stock Generac a buy. Shares could surge 50 percent. Are you seeing a big economic impact as we're seeing more weather events, more problems with the power grid across the country? This seems to be more common. It is. I mean, you look at um, you know just power quality in general. Uh, you can look at this. Uh, there's a lot of statistics out there, but over the last several decades, We've struggled with more power outages as Americans and in the U.S. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So first of all, you've just got you know, the severity of weather is greater. Um, you know, climate change, uh, some of the things that are going on there are creating warmer, uh, you know, warm spells and colder cold spells, creating more uh, hurricanes that are, are more intense and more rapid intensif intensification of these weather systems. You've got events like the, uh, the uh, winter freeze that happened down in Texas last February. These are anomalies that used to every, happen every maybe 100 years, and they now seem to be happening more frequently. That puts a lot of stress on the infrastructure that delivers the power. So that's one part of it. The second part of it is that the grid itself is transforming. We're, we're trying to decarbonize, which we need to do, mm -hmm. right? So moving to more renewables, you know, large utility scale wind farms and solar farms, and that's great. The challenge, of course, is that that type of power is intermittent. It's variable. And so when you have a variable source like that, you have to have some way to create a continuous source of power, even when the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining. And so I think grid operators and utilities are struggling with that transition. And as they struggle, you're seeing some of this manifest in you know, power quality issues. And that's why our products have been in such high demand. You're a staple here in Wisconsin. You have plants in South Carolina. You're expanding here in the, in the state again. How is that expansion going? It's going well. Uh, so we, we did open a new plant down in South Carolina, uh, right on the border of Georgia and South Carolina, in Trenton, South Carolina. And we've got about 500 employees down there. It's a great plant. Uh, it really was to help us expand. Most of our base of operations is here in Wisconsin. We're a Wisconsin, uh, you know, born and raised company. I'm a Wisconsin born and raised uh, person. So, you know, our company's been around over 60 years here outside of Waukesha. And uh, we have five manufacturing plants around southeastern and, and kind of uh, east central Wisconsin. And uh, we love it here. It's great. But we felt like we needed to expand kind of, you know, beyond the Wisconsin borders to really have, you know, a lot of our growing markets are down in the southeast, as you can imagine, where you do get hurricanes and some of these weather disturbances in particular, uh, we wanted to be closer to our customers. But we did, you know, we, and we continue to invest in the state of Wisconsin. We're, we're adding on to our headquarters with a new R&D uh, center, which is fantastic. Uh, we bought a call center here just off of I-94. It was the old American family uh, claim center. We turned that into a customer contact center where we're taking 
right now, you know, calls from people down in the southeast and down in Florida yeah. about their products. So it's, it's worked out really, really well. Let's talk about the economy. I'm assuming you're not immune to the labor shortage that we're seeing across the country. Here specifically in the state of Wisconsin, what is that picture like? How many jobs does the company have open as we sit here today? We've got a couple hundred openings today. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, and it's been constant, right? Like it's uh, uh, over the last year and a half, two years, really the pandemic, I think, um, exposed some of the challenges with the labor market, right? So you've got uh, just it accelerated some retirements, of course, people who just chose to, to take an early retirement and not deal with the pandemic, put themselves in harm's way in particular. Um, you know, and that, so you got that part of the issue. The other part of the issue is unemployment was low even before that. And so uh, we've really been struggling with that. It's been, it's been difficult to find people, not only in Wisconsin, but just you know, globally for us as well. The, the employment market's been tight. Is that your biggest hindrance towards growth? I'm worried about it being uh, a problem for us in the long term. And it's not just our employees, but it's our distributions employees. So, so our products are installed by electricians. Right? So these tradespeople, this is also an area where unemployment is, is a challenge. Right? So finding people that go into the trades and want to be plumbers, electricians, HVAC technicians, this is an area that's really critical for the installation of products like ours. So you know, when we think about not only our own operations and the effect that you know, it could be a, a challenge to growth with not being able to get the right employees for uh, us here in Wisconsin, but also across the nation with our distribution. So we're, we're worried about that. We're working on different things to try and, you know, combat that, but it's not an easy solution. Coming out of the pandemic, we're now dealing with record high inflation. At this point, is that being passed along to cons the consumer? And ha have you seen any leveling of inflation where, as we sit here today? Yeah, inflation's been tough. I mean, yeah. we've all been dealing with that in our personal, our grocery bills and our energy bills and our gas bills. Um, uh, and we've been dealing with it as a company. So all of the input costs that go into the product, the labor that we just talked about mm -hmm. has gone up, uh, the raw materials, uh, the, we use a lot of steel, we use a lot of copper, we use a lot of aluminum. All of those elements have gone up quite a bit. Uh, our own energy costs, everything to produce the products keeps going up. Um, I, you know, it's gone up a lot year over year. I think what we're seeing today when we look at the more near term is it feels like it's leveled out. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's rising quite as quickly. Still high, though. Still high, relatively speaking, to yep. where it was a year or two ago. Now, we've had to pass that along, to your point, with price increases to our customers. Uh, we, we hope that we're kind of hitting a point now where we're stable, more stable with the pricing environment, more stable with our input costs. But time will tell. You know, I think inflation is one of those things that it's always easier to see it when you look backwards. It's a lot harder to see it when you look forward. Aaron Yongfeld, President and CEO of Generac, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Matt. Coming up, the NBA and Milwaukee Bucks just six weeks until Election Day. The team in the league's push for greater voter involvement and the new moves they're making next.